Hello. Hello, everybody. How are you this morning? Hey, all the way around Al Hayr. Okay, so I'm still kind of trying to figure out like this camera angle thing. Um, just trying to get the best angle for like a spinning wheel and for you guys to see the fiber that I'm spinning and then maybe even my face sometimes because, <laughs> you know, that's nice, right? So let's see. Maybe. Oh, yes, and our lovely Christmas tree. Let's see. This might work. And then I can always just like lean down a little bit. Aha. Yeah, well, you can kind of see the spinning wheel here. All right. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first spin along. Um, so today we're going to be spinning this braid of roving that I dyed myself. I did some hand painting. I call this tropical sunrise for obvious reasons. Um, this was like probably my second or third attempt at dyeing, and I think it actually turned out really, really nicely. So I'm excited to see how it spins up. So let's go ahead and get uh, the spinning wheel set up. Um, today I'm using my Ashford Joy 2, which is an absolute joy to spin on. So just take off the bobbin from a another project that I've been working on. One of the big benefits from using the Joy is that it's got an orifice hook that's like kind of built into it. Like it just kind of has a little, its own little slot. And I know like that's a huge issue for us spinners is we continuously lose our orifice hooks, which is super annoying. But this way, at least I have a place to put it. And this is me adjusting the tension. Um, so there are a couple different tension options for spinning wheels. There's um, double drive, which is what my antique wheel upstairs does. It's when the string goes on to the whirl as well as the bobbin. And it kind of controls the tension like that way. But with this is scotch tension. Um, so it's a separate thing other than the drive band. I probably could explain that a little bit better, but it's the best I can do. Um, okay, so I'm kind of trying to decide how I want to spin this. Um, I'm kind of thinking because it's got kind of like a repeat as far as colors go, that I might want to do like a fractal. So if I do want to do a fractal, do I want to do it, you know, two ply or chain ply, which will like give me continuous color. Okay, let me see if I can raise the camera up a little bit more, just so you can see my face, you know, just a little. Oh, that's much better. All right. So, okay, it's, I think, yeah. So I think fractal is probably the best way to go for this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing it. Um, 
Okay, so the way that you do a fractal spin, in case you don't know, is you take your whole thing of roving and you split it down the center vertically. So as well, I mean, as evenly as possible, right? You kind of just have to eyeball it. And I do have a skill, like I could measure it and just like be super, super accurate about it, but eh. Who does that? I'm sure a lot of people actually, it's probably better. So as I'm splitting it, I'm noticing that like there's very little light in the center of the roving, which means that there was a like really good color penetration. And that makes me super excited because I that was something I was really worried about when I was like hand painting it. I'm like, oh, did I put enough dye? Is this, am I doing this right? But I'm quite pleased so far. Oh, what's happening? Is that it? Did I do it? Okay, yeah. Okay, so I've got two halves. So in order to fractal spin, what you'll do is you spin a whole half of your roving from beginning till end, just all the way through. And then you take your other half and you keep splitting that in half. And then you spin that half. And then you split the other thing in half. And then you spin that and then you just keep going until you can't split it in half anymore. Um, and I think I'm going to chain ply it so that I can keep the colors going. Um, so I guess here we go. And of course my lead split because why wouldn't it? That's okay. And I'm thinking I'm kind of want to go for like a fingering weight because a lot of the patterns that I end up liking, that's like the size yarn that it asks for. So I'm going to have to spin this fairly thin because chain plying is essentially three plying or yeah, three ply. You get it. So three widths to get a fingering weight. That's going to be... That'd be pretty thin. Cool. <laughs> so for me, I don't know about you guys, but starting a spin fresh, like on a lead is always the most challenging part of the spin it's always the beginning just getting started and it's funny that i say always because i've literally only been doing this since april of this year so i'm sure it'll get easier for me as time goes on doesn't look like much is in frame. So I guess I'll switch the camera angle. There we go. Because this is a spin along, who cares about my face?
This is um, a fiber that I got for free actually as a bonus item when I purchased the Joy. Um, and it's a blend of merino wool, alpaca, and silk. So it's an absolute joy to spin. Ha, huh. joy. Get it? <coughs> I'm funny. Um, I pick up Amara at 1230. So just be here before then or take the car seat out just in case. Okay. I always try to be so careful about um, getting the, the sliding hook so that the fiber is even on the bobbin. I mean, which, I mean, most people do, right? Like that's not uncommon, but especially when it comes to like the colors that I'm spinning, I don't know, it's just so satisfying when you get like all of the same color in its own little section. And then once you finish, uh, you know, a little color block and it's, it's just, I don't know, it's so satisfying. Okay, so here the colors are muddying up a little bit because Blue and orange are opposite colors, um, but they are also, you know, they're also complementary. So they look really nice next to each other. But that little transition area where the colors are kind of touching, it just gets muddied up a little bit because because they're opposite colors. They just that's just what happens. Wow, you, I just noticed you can barely see the yarn being spun <laughs> on camera. Um, also, I don't know if you can see, but right there, I've got a Milo under the Christmas tree. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
I'm pretty much a crazy cat lady, even though I only have two cats. But that's only because um, I'm pretty sure my mother would kill me if I brought home another cat. You know, on top of having a toddler. So, uh, yeah. But one day soon, very soon, the hubby and I are going to have um, our own place. We're actually looking right now and uh, house hunting is like, it's fun. But at the same time, it's like kind of stressful. But, and a little bit like you get disappointed pretty frequently because like sometimes it's like, oh, well, this is the amount that you want to put down on a place and that's your offer. But then, you know, somebody else comes along with a better offer. And of course you put yourself in the seller's shoes and what are you going to take? So, you know, but it's okay. It'll happen when it's meant to happen and we'll have the place that's meant for us and it'll all be perfect. But until then, uh, you know, you've got to live by the rules of the house. But one day when we do have our own place and Amara is a little bit older, we plan on adopting a pregnant cat from like a kill shelter because I don't know if you guys know this, but typically when a shelter um, takes in a pregnant cat, they euthanize it fairly quickly so that they don't have even more cats to have to take care of, you know, after she gives birth and she has all these kittens they have to worry about. But yeah, typically they'll, they'll kind of euthanize them pretty quickly to avoid that situation from happening. Um, so I'm planning on adopting a pregnant cat from a kill shelter, helping her have her babies, and then adopting out um, most of them, but we will keep the mommy cat, um, get her fixed and the bait and a couple of the babies fixed and keep them as pets. And I think that will, um, you know, teach Amara some really nice life lessons, you know, how to take care of something and she'll be older by then too. I mean, she's only two years old now or well, she'll be two in like two weeks. But, I don't know, I think that's just going to be a really nice thing for her to learn. such a good cat he's like <laughs> he's literally the best like he ever since he was first born we got him when he was a really really baby kitten um he was always super cuddly he would always just fall asleep under my neck under my chin and he would just stay there for hours pretty much all night actually and even now, he's a big cat, guys. He's like 25, almost 25 pounds. He's a he's like half Maine Coon. So he's a big, big cat. Not just, I mean, he is probably a little overweight, but who cares? He's fluffy and I love that. But um, he even will now, to this day, try to snuggle underneath my chin and, you know, suffocate me a little bit. But I let him do it because I love him. <laughs> And I love, I love that attention. But he'll only do that after the baby's asleep. And don't get me wrong, I mean, He's really great with Amara. Really, really great with her. I mean, she like puts toys on him and she'll try to ride him like a horse and he won't say a thing.
Yep. <laughs> Looks like I need a little bit more twist in this. See if I can salvage this. There we go. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I hate, I don't know about you guys, how you feel about like trying to salvage like the pieces that, <laughs> but I'm gonna do my best. bit thicker in that little section than I would like but you know what it's fine and back on track I really love these colors I mean it's so happy and vibrant I wonder if I'm gonna make anything with this or if I'm just gonna end up selling this yarn we shall see. Because it's really kind of, I mean, I don't know if funny is the word for it, because it's not haha -ha funny, but I definitely prefer spinning over like knitting or crocheting or anything right now. Like that's just my current feelings on the subject. But um, I don't know, sometimes there's just a yarn that I make that I'm just like, nope, this one's for me. And I think maybe this might be one of those.
just noticed the music turned off. Let me try and get a different station going. I love this color blue. This is one of my favorite colors of all time. This and purple are my two favorite colors. And, um, speaking of purple, um, one of my dyeing experiments that I did is um, breaking violet um, using Wilton's violet food coloring. And um, I actually got the idea from Chemnitz. Shout out to Chemnitz. I actually watch a lot of her videos. She's so talented and knowledgeable when it comes to dyeing fiber and yarn and all sorts of stuff um i always like watch her videos as homework before i try to do anything she seems to have tried almost everything so um that was like a great source of information um i learn a lot using youtube and like watching videos from other people and then going and trying and to do it myself and i usually have pretty good success so, um, actually here, I'll show you guys. This is, um, my current bobbin spinning the, whoop, there we go. Um, spinning the, the breaking violet. Let me just get that nice and close. There we go. There was a lot of white left over, which means that I probably didn't use enough dye to begin with. Um, and the braid of roving, it was, it, I kept it braided. So, um, where it was braided, it kept a lot of white. Here's the, I still have a lot more roving left. Well, not a lot more roving, but you can see how successful that experiment was. Um, basically just putting in a dry braid of roving into a pot with only violet food coloring. And it the way that it breaks and the way, the rate at which it the fiber absorbs each individual color that comprises the violet food coloring. It's just so cool how that happens. There are a couple other experiments that I wanna try with that. One of them is um, breaking black and breaking um, delphinium blue. I wonder if there are any other colors that you can do that with. Um, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there are, but like, you know, interesting, interesting ones. I mean, it's all interesting, right? Like you can just do a whole bunch of dyeing experiments and see what ends up looking the best and turning out nice. And then of course, if you don't like something, you can always over dye it unless it's dark or something. 
then you're kind of stuck with what you've got. But, you know, either way, it's going to spin up into something beautiful regardless. So anyways, yeah, I'm really, I'm pleased with the way that my Breaking Violet turned out. It's just, I wish it had a little bit more color penetration and less white. So I think the next time I do it, I'm just going to add a lot more violet. Or maybe I'm not going to have the um, roving braided. I might just kind of um, tie it, like knot it in a few different sections to keep some white, but not a lot. Who knows? We'll see. but I'm definitely interested in trying the Breaking Black and Breaking Delphinium Blue. If you guys know of any other um, dyes, food colorings that will do that, please let me know. I'm super interested to, to try that out. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do like a ton of dyeing experiments just to see what happens. Okay, bye. So a few other um, <laughs> spinspirational people, oh God, that was bad, but I also love it, um, <laughs> that, I, uh, that I really like um, is uh, Grace Shalom Hopkins. She was um, one of the first spinning YouTubers that I found who... I mean, I'm, I was so inspired by her and her work and she's so like down to earth and cool and man, I feel like we would be best friends. Like she's so neat and um, she's so talented and she's very, very knowledgeable when it comes to spinning. And I watched so many of her videos, like almost all of them, I'm sure, before I even attempted spinning on a spinning wheel. Um, yeah, so she, I, there were so many questions that I had, like, as far as just different techniques. And, um, she, I mean, th there's not a single video that, you know, didn't answer. Like, it was just so, like, uh, one of the best learning experiences I've had on YouTube. Um, and since then, I've been able to kind of practice the and you know now I'm building my own confidence to be able to share what I can do here on YouTube um, with you guys 
And I just feel like spinning can be such a fun and social experience. Um, although it is a pretty ambiguous craft, but it's so relaxing and you can, it can be so, you can be so meditative while you're doing it. But at the same time, I really enjoy it as a social experience. Um, for example, once a month, I'll go to the Greater Los Angeles Spinning Guild meeting, and it's just so cool to be around like-minded people who enjoy the same kind of craft that you do. And to be able to share ideas in person is, is just so rewarding. But yeah. Uh, anyways, if any of... Uh, you lovely viewers who are joining me today have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to see something specific in the future, that's another thing I would love to know. Um, so right now I'm just kind of going off of what I want to do, which is great, but if there's something specific you guys want to see, that's also good to know. Let's see, besides um, Grace Shalom Hopkins and Chemnitz, who else, who else? Well, I've got to give a huge shout out to one of my besties, Chelsea, who got me into the craft to begin with. She's, she's so funny, I love that girl. She keeps telling me that there's nothing that I don't touch that I can't do magically, <laughs> which isn't true. Um, when I first was interested in spinning, she got me started on a drop spindle and I sucked eggs <laughs> as far as that went. And it was just so bad. It was, it was such a bad experience that I like, I didn't want to touch spinning again, like, or even like consider it. And it was probably another two years before I even like it caught my attention again. I don't know what it was. I don't know what happened to make me go, hmm, maybe I should try that again. But I don't know, I did. And I'm glad that I did because this is one of my favorite things like in the whole world now. And I know I've only been doing it since April, but it's so rewarding. I don't know, it's just so relaxing and it puts me in such a wonderful frame of mind. And there's such a beautiful and rich history when it comes to spinning yarn or any other kind of textile. It just kind of makes you want to learn more. And the silly thing is I was never interested in like history as like a student, like I, oh, okay. Something just spooked my cat. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was interesting. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I was never interested in history as a student, but like, I guess it just depends. Like if there's, there's something that you're interested in, like a specific event or a specific object, for example, or a specific um, craft, I guess it kind of changes your attitude about that whole thing. One of my favorite things to do while I'm spinning is um, to listen to audiobooks. And right now I'm actually rereading the whole of uh, Dresden Files. I don't know if you guys have heard of this series or enjoy reading. Jeez, Milo, what's going on? Milo, why are we freaking out? I just hope he doesn't break any of the Christmas balls. That would be really upsetting. But yeah, Dresden Files is one of my favorites of all times. Also, um, another series by Jim Butcher, Codex Alera. Um, that one is like 
straight up. If somebody asked me what's my favorite series of books, Codex Alera, 100%. Um, to the point where like I even named my daughter after one of the main characters. So there you go. I really love this blend of fiber. It's so soft and it's easy to spin. I'm gonna have to look up where I can get more of this. And here I'm thinking I have, I'm like, wow, look how much I've spun already. <laughs> nah, there's still quite a lot more. It's too funny. But you know what? This is not a race. It's an experience. It's not how fast you make the yarn. It's how happy you are while you make it. And how much fun you're having while you're making it.
which is why I really love spinning up fibers that are um, fun colors because it's, it's fun to see the progression of the yarn that you're making from one color to the next. It definitely keeps my interest. Um, which makes me think like, so I have this fiber that I, um, I blended up. Um, one of the great benefits of being part of the Greater Los Angeles Spinning Guild is that you have um, like a library of tools that you can check out. Um, one of those things being a drum carter. So I checked out a drum carter one month and I have these just like undyed fibers that I've received either as gifts or um, that I've purchased out of, I don't know, curiosity, I guess. And um, so I started blending them up to see like if I can make, you know, fun combinations of fibers. And one of my favorite ones that I made was um, Merino alpaca silk rose fiber and holographic angelina and those bats look like fresh fallen snow it's so beautiful but it's pure white and um i don't want to i've dyed a bat before just like hand painted it and it turned out well and it spun up beautifully but with this one I want to spin it up the way that it is, pure white, and then try dyeing the yarn. And I wanna do it like very subtle light colors, kind of like a winter color way, very Elsa inspired, if you will. Um, and I'm sure that'll turn out really pretty and it'll be super appropriate as far as like what the fibers look like. I'm pretty excited about that one actually, but I'm also worried that I'm gonna lose interest in the middle of spinning it because it it is all just one color. But I think the yarn will turn out better if I do it in that order. All right, guys, so we're coming up on about an hour and I just wanna say thank you for those who joined me today and thank you to those who have watched after the fact. Um, please leave any comments below for any content that you would like to see in the future. Um, I'm thinking about doing maybe like a live dyeing process of some fiber. Um, I think that might be fun. Um, you know, send me links to inspirational photos that you think might be fun colorways, things like that. Um, what else? Um, yeah, so just, I would just wanna say thank you again and um, probably see you on Friday. I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to get as much of this spun up as possible. That way we can get to plying and uh, then you guys can see that part of the process. Um, I think that way we can move on to different rovings, different yarns. Oh, hi, Luna. Cat number two makes an appearance right at the end. <laughs> All right, I guess this is a good place to park it.
So anyways, thank you again. And I guess I'll see you on Friday and hopefully I'll have this all spun up and ready to ply. And then we'll go from there. Thanks guys.